Hello everyone, welcome back to ECMATH. Today we're going to be looking at solving multiple angle equations. And that might be a mysterious term to you, so I'll show you exactly what a multiple angle equation looks like. Here it is. Uh, a multiple angle equation looks like a standard trig equation, except the argument of the trig function, the input, has some coefficient attached to x. And that actually complicates our lives pretty remarkably. Um, you know, one, if you remember from the last section, we had all kinds of identities dealing with this, right? We could be like, well, this is 1 minus 2 sine squared x, and, and substitutions we could do, but it turns out that those substitutions don't really help you as much as you, you would think that they would, because you, you could still substitute, but now you have a sine squared x and you have a 1, and oh, it's just not actually much better um, to do a substitution, than, and sometimes that won't even work, then it will be to use the method I'm about to show you. But before I do, I want you to think about, really think about what, ignore the root 2 over 2 part, what is cosine 2x? Well, cosine of 2x is a normal cosine graph sped up. That is, you're looking at a cosine graph that oscillates twice as fast. So if we're looking for solutions, we're going to have more solutions in the same interval. Uh, now, you don't have to just trust my graphing ability. I went on Desmos and graphed the same thing. So I have the line root 2 over 2. I have cosine x and I have cosine 2x. And you can tell, uh, hopefully, which is which. And you'll notice that I'm just going to highlight the interval from 0 to 2 pi. So here's 0 starting and 2 pi ending. And I notice that uh, I'm looking for the intersection points of this red line with my graph, and I notice that within that interval, the cosine graph has one, two solutions, just two little solutions. They're, at, they're on the pi over fours. That's a pretty standard thing. I think we did those in the last video, maybe that exact one even. But this new one, let's look at the solutions of this new one. I see one over here that maybe is at pi over eight, but I can't really trust and be sure. I have one over here, maybe a little before pi, one over here a little bit after pi. Maybe those are again on the pi over 8s, but I'm not sure about it because uh, the graph isn't scaled very well. Then that's on purpose. And I have a final one over here, so it looks like instead of two solutions, I actually have four solutions. Uh, and that's one way to think about these multiple angle solutions is if you think about whatever the basic equation without the multiple angle would, how many, however many solutions that would have, the number inside kind of multiplies the number of solutions that you're going to get because it makes the trig function that it's based on or that it's, it's surrounding it oscillate faster. And the faster you're oscillating, the more solutions you're going to get. I mentioned this in the last video, but oh boy, is this a very common calculus problem. Um, I can't count the number of times I've seen in a calculus class, hey, that's a fun shape. Find me the area of that shape, right? Like, seems like a pretty reasonable problem. I have talked to so many calculus teachers who have told me that their kids in calculus can do this problem, the calculus part, fine. They know how to find areas like nothing else. Where their kids in calculus, A, B, B, C, doesn't matter, screw this problem up, find any intersection points. And you can't do an area if you don't know where to start and stop. So, um, that's what we're here for. This is kind of part of why we teach you all of these trig identities. All of this terrible torture with identities and verifying and stuff. A lot of it is so that you can find the intersection points of any graphs you want. Here's a slightly and even more complicated calculus question. Find the area of this shape right here. Something you can 100% do with calculus, but to do it, you kind of have to know the coordinates of all four corners of that weird little not quite polygon, weird little little funny shape. And if you don't know the coordinates of those corners, you can't solve the problem. So you have to be able to solve these trig equations and find their intersections just so that you can kind of proceed whenever you, you end up doing a trig problem. Okay, so we're not doing calculus today. Um, it's probably sad for some of you. Um, we are going to show you how to solve these multiple angle equations. Um, and then we'll actually talk about 
um, I think the next next video where we do advanced techniques, we will talk about things like finding the intersection points of uh, cosine and cosine of 2x. That's something we could definitely do probably, probably honestly is already on your homework. Uh, so you might see that anyway. Um, but let's do the multiple angle ones right now. So cosine of 2x is equal to square root of 2 over 2. I'm going to solve this one first, talk through the steps, and then I have written out the steps and I'll show you the recipe, but I want to just, just do it first. I'm going to keep myself organized with some lines, okay? All right, so the first thing I want to do is pretend that this is an easier problem. It's a really good math strategy. You just say, guess what? I don't want to solve that problem yet. I'm not ready for it. I'm just going to solve the problem cosine of theta is equal to square root of 2 over 2, okay? Because I know how to solve that problem. So cosine of theta is equal to root 2 over 2 in two places. I know root 2 over 2 for my unit circle, so I know that theta is equal to pi over 4, or, and I'm going to write it in a separate line here, uh, I also need cosine to be positive, so that will have to be in quadrant 4, uh, so theta would also be 7 pi over 4. I'm going to put the 7 on top, that's more standard. It doesn't actually matter where the 7 is, it could be out front, but it's, it's more standard to see it on top. Um, and I'm going to do that first, but now here I'm going to do something really important. Those is just one solution, and if you look at my graph, it's, where is she? You'll notice that I have actually like many solutions to this equation. So what I'm going to do is write out the general form. Write out the general form of this equation. So I'm going to say pi over 4 plus 2 pi n, right? Uh, cosine oscillates every 2 pi, at least cosine, right, which is what I've turned this into, oscillates every 2 pi. So I'll write plus 2 pi n. And I'll do it for both. That's important. Okay. Now I'm going to do step 2. Step 2 says take that equation you just solved. Um, there we go. Take that equation you just solved and actually solve the problem you're, you were trying to solve. So I wasn't trying to solve where theta is. I was trying to solve where 2x is equal to all those things. Well, guess what? Theta is just equal to 2x. So all you're going to do is substitute 2x back in for theta. You can actually skip the theta step entirely and go straight to the 2x step once you're, you're uh, you know, practice with this. Uh, yeah, that's something you can do for sure. Now what? Well, you got to solve for x. Okay. Uh, now I'm going to take, I'm actually going to take this and put it over here. because so I want to solve this first one for 2x. Now watch what I do. I have to divide everything by 2. But when I say everything, I mean everything. So I'm going to say 2x divided by 2 is x. Pi over 4 divided by 2 is pi over 8. And 2 pi n divided by 2 is pi n. Ha! And this is the trick. This is the thing that people always forget or they, they don't figure out. And now here's a graphical connection. This is saying that uh, we're doing cosine. Cosine of 2x has period what? Well, to find the period of a graph, you do 2 pi divided by b, and b is 2, so 2 pi divided by 2 is equal to pi. So here I've said that cosine of 2x has the period of pi, and I actually just solve for that in another way just algebraically, so I didn't have to think about 2 pi over b. I was just able to divide that by 2 and say, ah, so my first solution is at pi over 8, which is what I thought it was from the graph, and I'm going to have that solution repeat, not every 2 pi, but every pi. Let's do the same thing on the other side. So I'll divide by 2, and I will get that x is 7 pi over 8, and so 2x divided by 2 is x, 7 pi over 4 divided by 2 is pi over 8, 7. 2 pi n over, pi over 2 is equal to pi n. And I get the same thing. So x is also 7 pi over 8 plus pi n. And I actually want to go back to the graph. And let's look at that. So we know what the solutions are. I want to show you those graphically. I have to clear some of the, the junk off of here. Let's see. Get that out of here. Get that out of here. 
So I'm only focusing on the green graph. And I've, what I've discovered is I have actually two classes of solution. I'll do the first class with like my rainbow pen right here. This is x equals pi over 8. And that's kind of on the downslope of this green curve. So if I go to the next time the green slurp, slurp, slope curves down, this is going to be at 9 pi over 8. How do I know that's at 9 pi over 8? Well, it's because those were at pi over 8 plus pi n, which means that those solutions are exactly pi units apart. Why? Because the period of cosine 2x has period of pi. So that's the repetition on those solutions. But I also have this other class of solutions. I think the one I found here is right there at x equals 7 pi over 8 plus pi n. So where's the next solution of this one? Well, it's the next time that the, the sine act graph goes back up. And where would that be? Well, let's see. 7 pi over 8 plus uh, 8 pi over 8 would be 15 pi over 8. So just a little bit before 2 pi. Oh, wait. That, the graph kind of bears that out, right? I see that this is just a little bit before 2 pi. And so what I've done graphically, at least, is start to list out all the possible solutions. And if I was really excited about this, I could, of course, keep going and say, oh, here's a solution. This one must be at um, 15, 16, 17 pi over 8. And this next one over here must be at uh, 15 plus 8 uh, is 23 pi over 8. And I could have kept going, and I could actually just keep going for forever. But I want to look at the problem again. Um, oh. Well, I didn't write it on the problem. Most of the time on these problems, you'll see the direction solve on the interval 0 to 2 pi. So you don't have to write out every single gosh darn solution. That would be silly. But also, this is not a complete solution either. You have to continue listing out solutions until you've listed all of the ones that are on that target interval from 0 to 2 pi. So here's how we're going to do that. Um, well, the way we list out those different n values is basically by creating a table uh, and plugging in different values of n. So one way that you can arrange this is actually make a little t-chart that goes like n, and then we have pi over, uh, what have we got, 8 plus pi n, and we have 7 pi over 8 plus pi n, and then I can just list out. All right, if n is equal to 0, then I get the answers pi over 8 and 7 pi over 8. If n is equal to 1, then uh, I usually want to take this pi n and think about it as 8 pi over 8, right? So like kind of match the denominators. So then this would be 9 pi over 8. And this would be uh, 7 plus 8 is 15 pi over 8. And notice, I'm, I know that I saw that on the graph. I'm doing this without actually thinking about the graph. If n were equal to 2, I add another 8 pi over 8 to the, the numerators. So I would have... Uh, 17 pi over 8, and another 8 pi plus 15 is 23 pi over 8. If n was equal to 3, and by the way, I'm going too far right now, so you're probably saying, Mr. X, stop, blah. I'm just showing you what you would do if you wanted to list more solutions. If n was 3, you could just count this out, um, add another 8, and you get 25 pi over 8. So you really, when you're doing this, it, it feels tedious until you see the pattern, and then it starts to go really quick. Um, 23 pi over 8 plus another 8 pi over 8 is 31. Ooh, is it? Yeah, 31 pi over 8, and so on. But also, if you list all of these answers, you're also not really addressing the question. What you need to do is pick the answers that are on the interval 0 to 2 pi as the question directed. And in this case, it turns out that only those first four answers, two from each of the equations, are in that interval 0 to 2 pi. 
I personally really do like thinking about the graph to help me out here. I don't, I don't actually graph it. I don't get on Desmos every time. That's another way to solve these, I guess. Um, but I think, okay, the graph's going twice as fast, so I had two solutions originally for all for the trig equations. Now I'm going to have four solutions because the graph is going twice as fast. And that's how I know to list out uh, four solutions this way. But you can also just check numerically, you know, 2 pi is 16 pi over 8. So if you get any solutions greater than 16 pi over 8, you know to stop. And just for a quick sec, here's all that work on one page. And now we're going to go back and uh, look at the written down steps. So I pre this is what I wrote out earlier when I was thinking about the steps that I like to do to solve this. Your first job is, uh, if you have to, you, you isolate that multiple angle trig term. You break it out so that it's the only thing you have to deal with. Uh, if there's anything else going on in the equation, get rid of that first. Then you do that little substitution where instead of 2x or 3x or 4x, you just write theta, pretend it's a standard trig equation. You can write a theta, you can write a u, like the letter u sometimes we use. Um, you can write a, an x. Um, I don't like writing x because I already have a 2x and that's kind of awkward. So use some other letter that's not already in the problem. Solve, then that rewritten equation, you solve it. You take it, you solve it. Then what you're going to do, uh, and you write out the general solution. So, you know, the plus 2 pi n for sine and cosine or plus pi n for tangent. Um, so let me add that here, right? Plus 2 pi n or we'll say plus pi n for tangent. And we have a tangent example later to talk about. Then you're going to, after you solved it, you resubstitute the 2x term. And then you solve that by dividing by, in, in the last case, 2. Uh, but divide by whatever the coefficient is. And then you can use that solved general form to list out answers. You can use a table, you can use a chart. I don't really care how you list out answers. List out the answers until you've exceeded the domain 0 to 2 pi. And that's how you know that you're going to be done. And then you circle however many 4, 8, 6 answers. There's usually an even number of answers to these. Um, so let's do another example and see how this works out. So that last problem took 17 minutes to do uh, one problem. Thank you all for sticking with me through this. I promise we'll start to go faster. Uh, so I'm trying to solve the equation sine of 4x is equal to negative root 2 over 2. The first thing I'm going to do is pretend that this is an easier problem and just say this is sine of theta. All right, so where is theta equal to root 2 over 2? Well, that happens at theta equals, well, let's see, I'm doing sine and it's negative. But this is the one that matches with the pi over 4s. So theta is going to be uh, 5 pi over 4 plus 2 pi n, remember the generalized solution, and theta is going to equal 7 pi over 4 plus 2 pi n. Oh, I forgot to add, I am going to try to solve this on the interval 0 to 2 pi. So uh, I'm, I'm not going to try to find the general, I'm going to find just solutions. Excuse me. And actually, while I'm thinking about the interval, I want to think about the number of solutions I'm going to find. This equation has two basic solutions, right, if it was just theta, but I have secretly in there a 4x. And so 4x is going to speed up the sine graph by a factor of 4. There'll be four times as many waves. So where I had two solutions, I'm actually now expecting eight solutions to this equation. Eight solutions that I'm going to have to list out. So we'll see how that goes. Um, but you can always kind of get that sense before you even start solving a dang darn thing. All right. So I'm looking at this equation. There it is, right in the middle. And I've written out the general solutions to the theta problem. Now I realize I wasn't actually doing that problem. I was doing this new problem. That is uh, 4x equals all of that. And 4x equals all of that. So I know really that 4x is going to equal all of those. And then I'm just going to take that first equation, divide everything by 4, and rewrite. So my x is going to be 5 pi over, well, 4 times 4 is 16, plus 2 pi over 4 is pi over 2n. So my first solution is 5 pi over 16, and then they will occur pi over 2 units apart after that 5 pi over 16. I'm going to do the same here, divide everything by 4, and I get x is 7 pi over 16 plus pi over 2n. 
So the next solution will happen at the, at the point 7 pi over 16, and then they will occur pi over 2 units after that as well. So let's list out these solutions to this equation then. So I'm going to do this kind of little t-chart here. Actually, I'm just going to, uh, no, I'm going to do a little t-chart here. So I'm just going to say like x1 and x2. We'll call this x1 and this x2. Um, I'm not going to rewrite the whole equations, and we'll call this n. So if n is 0, then my solutions are 5 pi over 16 and 7 pi over 16. Easy. If n is 1, then I'm going to add pi over 2 to those. I'm going to help myself out by remembering that pi over 2 is equal to 8 pi over 16. So kind of making the denominators common. That just helps me. So I'm, gonna, I'm basically going to add 8 to each numerator here. Uh, so that's going to be 13 pi over 16. And this is going to be 15 pi over 16. And I, I should also notice that right, 5 and 7 are 2 pi over 16s apart, and so are 13 and 15. So that's another little check, is that each, each group of solutions should be uh, the same you know, distance apart on the axis. Uh, well, 15 pi over 16, that's not even above pi yet. I still clearly have to keep going. I'm eventually going to also want to remember that 2 pi is 32 pi over 16. So anything less than 32 pi over 16 is going to be a solution. Anything more is not going to be a solution. So if I haven't solved all the solutions yet, then I better keep going. So what if n is 2? Then uh, I'm basically adding pi to each of these, but I'm just going to go based on my, my n equals 1 solutions and, and hope that I didn't screw those up. Uh, so I'm going to add 8 to this and get 21 pi over 16. And I'm going to add 8 to that and get uh, 23 pi over 16. Okay, still not above 32 pi, so I'm going to go one more n. What if n is 3? Then I add 8 more and I get 29 pi over 16. And I add uh, 8 to that and I get 31 pi over 16. Now 31 is pretty nice because I know 2 pi would be 32 pi over 16. So that means that this is probably the last solution from 0 to 2 pi. But say that I didn't notice that, or I didn't check on 2 pi, and what if n is 4? Question mark. Well, I would add 8 here and get 37 pi over 16, and that's too big. It's greater than 2 pi. So I would not need to list that solution. I have all 8 solutions here. I don't personally feel like you need to rewrite them. Um, I would just box those up and call it a day and there's your eight solutions which matches with the idea that we have a sine graph that has been sped up by a factor of four so where you would have two solutions originally that good old sine 4x means your graph is going faster you're going to have a lot more solutions it's a little tedious with fractions it's not really that hard to work out once you know the trick and when i say the trick i mean this move here of dividing the general form by that coefficient to find the new period of your solution. Let's do one more in this video. Uh, we'll do a tangent example. So we've done sine, we've done a cosine, we'll do a tangent. You can, of course, do this with uh, the other three, secant, cosecant, cotangent. Just do a reciprocal and turn it into sine, cosine, and tangent. So like, you, you really just need to know those three. Um, we're, again, going to solve this on the intervals from 0 to 2 pi. There's two big changes here. Number one, for tangent, you don't need two general term expressions because the period of tangent is pi. So you can just write the one solution and then plus pi n instead, and it's going to save you a lot of pain and effort. The other thing, though, is uh, that's just true for all tangents. The other thing, though, is that's particular to this problem. So we have a tangent of x over 2, which means the period of this graph is actually going to be stretched. Out. It's going to be slower than it's going to be then not faster. So that's different when we have that x over 2. I actually am going to expect fewer solutions on 0 to 2 pi than I otherwise would have expected. So where are those going to be? Well, let's do the method and find them. So 
What's the method? First, I forget that I'm solving a hard problem. Say, nope, I would like to not solve this problem. I'm going to solve the problem tangent of theta equals root 3 over 3. Oh my gosh, where does that happen? Well, let's see. It's positive, so I'm thinking quadrant 1. Opposite is root 3. Adjacent is 3. Interesting. Uh, so what do we get here? Um, I've, I've drawn this not to scale, by the way. This is a bad drawing. Uh, but I kind of do that on purpose because you don't need to have a right drawing. If you don't immediately recognize this off your, your unit circle, maybe you could try the Pythagorean theorem, the square root of uh, 3 squared plus root 3 squared, which is going to be root 12, which reduces to 2 root 3. So it looks like we actually have the pattern 1 root 1, 2 root 3. Interesting. I, this is confusing. It's feeling like a pi over 2, pi over 3. Here's another trick. This is rationalized. This is the standard version that we all memorize. Guess what? Just unrationalize it. Rationalize the numerator here. This is the one time where I actually do kind of agree with uh, all the folks that say don't ever rationalize your trig expressions because it can hide value. This, if you unrationalize it, gives you 3 over 3 root 3, which is 1 over root 3 which means this triangle here was actually wrong. It wasn't wrong, it just wasn't most usefully labeled. Hmm. It was not to scale. The opposite is one, the adjacent is root three. We know that triangle, that hypotenuse is two, and theta is pi over six. Now, again, I, I could be looking for multiple solutions here. I could say, oh, well, tangent's also positive. Where's tangent positive? In the third quadrant. Ah, so I could have negative 1, negative uh, root 3, negative 2, and, and so the angle would be 7 pi over 6. Also, don't need it. Don't need it. Why not? Because I'm just going to write theta is pi over 6 plus pi n. And those two candidate solutions for tangent are always going to be pi units apart. So don't write two solutions when you can write one. It's going to make your life a lot easier. Okay, so that was how you deal with this little trig uh, critter here. That was actually kind of a chapter four problem, not a chapter five problem, uh, but I'll leave it up. Now I'm going to solve this. I've solved the, the quote-unquote easy trig equation, even though it's not easy. It's just not uh, a multiple angle equation. Now I'm going to erase that theta, and remember, what was I looking at? I was looking at x over 2. Ah, how do I deal with an x over 2? I multiply everything by 2. So I get x equals pi over 3. Pi over 6 times 2 is pi over 3. Those cancel out. Plus 2 pi n. Okay. Well, I'm almost done here. Let me just start to list out my solutions. I only have one equation to work with, and that's why that's so valuable, is I only have to now list, uh, you know, x and n in my little t-chart. Well, if n is 0, x is pi over 3. Okay, good so far. What if n is 1? Well, 2 pi over 3 is 6 pi over 3, so that's 7 pi over 3. But wait, already, whoa there, I'm outside my target interval. This is too big for the problem that I was attempting to solve, 0 to 2 pi. And that's another thing that can happen, is you get so uh, outside your interval, like, immediately. And that means we have only one solution, and the only solution for this problem is x equals pi over 3. So that's another thing that can happen with multiple angles, is, like, something where maybe you were expecting more than one solution, and you actually got just one. Um, graphically, here's what's happening. Remember, tangent looks like this with two little swoop loops but when I do tangent of x over 2 let's do purple what am I doing I'm stretching that tangent out so where I would maybe have had two solutions before I actually only got one we stretch the graph out on 0 to 2 pi. And obviously that graph continues to repeat. If I was listing all solutions, you know, I would just 
list that, but I'm, I'm solving on 0 to 2 pi. So that's why I stopped there. All right, folks. Multiple angle trig equations. That's it. That's how you do them. This is, in this section, the hardest one. Uh, and then I think something that makes these hard is you're going to rock this section out on the homework where they tell you what to do. But in the next section, sometimes these come up. You do some factoring and you end up with a sine 2x. Well, then you have to do this whole process again. So really, really make sure you know this method because it shows up in later problems. And if you don't know it now, you're not really comfortable with it now. When it comes back in a problem where you also have a lot of other steps before and maybe after, you're going to have a very hard time. So that's why we brought this one out. Now stay tuned for the next video where we will do some of those problems uh, and also talk about other factoring and other identities that you might use when solving a trig equation. Thank you and have a nice day.